I know Charles has spoken about mapping and recording the rare plants at Car Hayes, and he spoke about champion trees and things like that. But the mapping that I have to do here is is much smaller, much um, much more basic, and it's involved with keeping an eye on the stock plants. And it's time of great change here. There are big, well, large new planting schemes going on, but also there's been quite a few fairly heavy storms after, uh, over the last two or three years and some of the really big beautiful specimen trees have come down which is a great shame but then it is also a superb opportunity for new planting. When a tree comes down it does have a tendency though from my own personal selfish interest to take out some of my stock plants so I do have to go back and check and this is one of those years when I'm going to have to basically go through all the maps of plants in the garden that are relevant to propagation and redo them and update them. So just to give you an idea, this is one that's in the middle of um, the process really, which, I mean, it is actually described as being one of the original maps showing plants dating back. Um, well, it was plants we would use for cuttings when I first came here, which was about 20 years ago. And as you can see, I've had to go through it, cross out ones that have died or been run over by a tractor or something or eaten. Um, there may be a plant that is too old or too weak now to use. So I've made a note of where you'll find better plants. So for example, here with the Alicia manisatum, we've got a lovely plant growing against a nice warm wall of the packing shed. So we can get good cutting material off that. There's one or two things I'd never found the name of, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of advice about, this is car haze lavender. That's a quite a challenging one to collect in terms of cuttings. We also get it from car haze. But the plants here are planted right on the edge of the pond, so you do have to be careful. Over the years, people have taken the material that's easy to get, uh, and now you have to sort of go down onto the bank and come at it from the other direction. But it's very easy. Um, it's a really good example of how you can actually damage your stock plant and weaken it too far so that you can't then use it. So we only take a small amount every year. Um, they take quite a while to get going, but they do have a quite an unusual appearance because the foliage is variegated. It's cream and green and it has a pale lilac flower. And normally, well, not normally, it's a matter of taste, but sometimes variegated foliage and the colour of the flower can, can clash horribly and make something that's a little bit ugly. But this is an example of something that's very delicate looking. It's a very gentle colour combination and I think it works really well. Um, yeah, this is, I say, this is one of the original maps updated but with the old information on it as well. So if I just put that one down a minute. This is an example of a map that was done fairly recently. This is a new planting on the way to the pump house and this is mostly camellias. There's also ilex. Um, there was a couple of other things, but I don't think I've actually listed them on, on this map. There are other things here that we don't use for cutting. I know there's uh, Eliagnus glabra reflexa growing along the back. But this was originally planted 2007, updated 2013, and now 2021. There were, over the winter, big tree came down. It's taken out a vast area like that. So, in fact, it's probably that one there that is no more. So I do have to go back and redraw it. The monkey puzzle as well, I'm afraid, has been taken down because that reached the end of its natural life. And there is, um, you can create a problem for yourself when you link your stock plant's location to something else that is growing. Because if that disappears overnight, like a hedge, you have no way, really no sure way of, of locating it until it perhaps flowers. Uh, I think you can probably hear the rain coming down. It's raining quite heavily. We were going to go out and see this area. Uh, just to give you an example, because again, there were some absolutely beautiful, massive ancient beaches here. And one of them came down and then there becomes a gap and the wind gets in and it brought down other trees as well. So this area again has been taken out completely and it's been opened up. So this part of the garden is now opened up and there's lots of new planting going on. And I will probably need to resource some new stock plants.
But that just gives you an example of trying to balance the beauty of a garden and the need to actually take cuttings from it without wrecking or damaging that garden.